are capable of communicating in ways vital to their survival. They can signal an array of perceptions and emotions. Hunger. Danger. The drive to reproduce. Some animals communicate so clearly that we could almost label their calls words. In Africa, for instance, Vervet monkeys use three separate sounds to broadcast different kinds of danger. When a young vervet hears the snake call, he looks around. When he hears the leopard call, he climbs high into the trees. And when he hears the eagle call, he scampers for cover. The calls have specific meanings, meanings that can't be confused if the animal is to survive. But do animals which produce calls like these have language? At what point does animal communication leave off and human language begin? Finding that point scientifically has not been easy. Early researchers thought one way was to train animals to act like us. Do this, Do this. Stringing words together logically implies that language exists. And if an animal were to actually use those words naturally, the implication would be even stronger. Jane Goodall has been considering the issue for three decades. She's looked for clues in chimpanzees' spontaneous behaviors. There's a very poignant story about a female chimpanzee called Lucy. She was raised from infancy in a human home, treated just like one of the family. She went to the refrigerator, took out cold snacks, poured herself a drink, watched the television, had access to magazines, her own bedroom, everything. And when she was somewhere between 10 and 13, for some reason her parents decided to send her back to Africa. She'd never seen another chimp. And I believe it was rather like sending a somewhat pampered Western adolescent out to live with some Australian Aborigines, for example, by herself. And she arrived in the Gambia. She was put in a large field enclosure with a couple of rather boisterous wild-born chimps from Burundi and she went into deep depression which lasted for at least two years trying to avoid the approaches of these two creatures who she didn't know at all and just around this time she was visited by someone who had known her in the old days when she was part of a family at that time Lucy had been taught I don't know somewhere between 60 and 100 signs of the American Sign Language and when she saw this visitor, she ran over to the wire of her enclosure and she looked into her eyes and she said, please help out. In her desperation, Lucy was capable of using what she'd been taught. But Goodall doesn't consider this evidence at all conclusive. The question remains, how far does this primitive potential for language extend? David Premack. One way uh, of shedding some light on what is language would be to attempt to teach it to a non-human species. But in my own case, the reason for doing so was to explore the nature of the difference, of, of the alleged difference between uh, our species and other species. And of course, in some, in some measure, to understand the nature of language. Premack is a pioneer in research into animal communication. Good, good boy. He's been trying to train animals to communicate with a language of plastic symbols, 
a system he developed some 30 Sit years up. ago. Sit up, Whiskey. Come on. Good boy. Okay? Pay attention. All right? See that? I designed a very uh, simple language for the chimp, which didn't require that it have the, uh, the basic machinery of human language. It simply required that the animal be able to learn rules. Okay. Good boy. Training always begins by uh, attempting to name various items in the world. You take a piece of plastic out, and you take an object out, and you attempt to develop an association between the two. Okay, let's Wait. Okay. See this word? Which one goes with this word? Chow. Good boy. Very good. See, the interesting thing about the learning words in the chimp, in yeah. fact, is that essentially all chimp words are learned in that fashion by directly associating the word with some object. Good good boy. The main deficiency in the chimpanzee is there is no evidence that it has any grammatical competence, that it has notions like subject, noun phrase, verb phrase, uh, without which you cannot formulate the rules of human language. Well, if I'm asked what the difference is, the real crucial difference between chimpanzees and humans, I would say without doubt from my own perspective that it's because humans have developed a spoken language. Chimpanzees can be taught certain types of languages in the labs and they can learn signs and symbols and string them together and communicate meaningfully, but they haven't developed their own spoken language. And this frees humans from the present. It enables us to discuss the past and learn from it. It enables us to make meaningful plans, not only for the immediate future, which even a chimp can do, but for next year or in 10 years time. It enables us to pass on traditions and cultures to our children about types of behavior or objects which are not present because we can talk about them, we can explain them. and. In this way, we are completely and utterly different from the chimpanzees, and always shall be, I believe. But